This is NBA 2K20 as it comes out of the case. This is that same exact game after the help of many, many modders. And I know that when I first played NBA 2K14, this is kind of what I assumed 2K would look like six years later. So today I'm going to walk you through what exactly can be achieved with mods, how they can make the game look and feel way more immersive, how they can affect nearly every mode in the game, and how you can go on to seemingly play modes that don't even exist in the game. Obviously, I hope it's implied here that you need a PC. This can't be done on PlayStation, can't be done on Xbox, preferably a desktop, and the links are going to be in the comment section and description for everything that I discuss. So the graphic mods, the how-to for the cyber faces, because this video would be an hour long if I was showing you the step-by-step -step for the setup. So this is more of a showcase for those of you that might be interested in getting into modding. Shout out to the modders who actually make these things possible. It is an incredible skill. And if you're looking to pick up a new skill during self-quarantine, consider using Skillshare. I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare allows you to pursue your passion and accomplish real growth by providing an amazing online learning community with the support of creative minds. They do so by offering classes that are designed for real life. However, they're not a burden and can easily be fit into a busy schedule. Just to show you how wide the topics can range, I've been asked many times what you need to pursue online streaming. There's a class on Skillshare that not only shows you how to get started, but even goes in depth on how to grow, how to engage with the audience, the kind of hardware you're going to need, all of this information in one neat package. I've even gone to the more complicated things and learning how to make my own Twitch bot by taking a class by Terrence Drum. Something that I wouldn't have necessarily thought to just search for randomly, but it was suggested, and that's the beauty of Skillshare. It's an extremely useful tool and is very affordable. An annual subscription will run you less than $10 a month, but the first 500 of my subscribers to use the link in the comment section and description will get a free 2-month premium membership with Skillshare, which is enough time to pick up countless skills. Be sure to click the link in the comment section or description to get started with your free trial. So the first thing everyone will want to do once they get their hands on mods is the graphics, because let's be real, in a sports game, those just matter. It's very hard to enjoy a basketball game when a basic detail like the jerseys are sloppy. So in terms of graphic mods, there are really a lot of different ways that this game can look. It just depends on the style that you go with. A lot of it has to do with the global file inside your way Google folder. But aside from that, I have a ton of different arena mods installed inside my folder, which make the game look and feel totally different in terms of the environment at least. So while your global file is going to affect what the basketball looks like and how the net physics work, there's mods that are going to make your courts look HD. They're going to be more reflective. They're going to look more vibrant. And then you also have the fog mod as well. If you remember the 2008 Boston Celtics arena, it always had this really foggy look to it, more so than any other year, that's how you can tell what you're looking at. And so I'm assuming that was the inspiration for this mod, although it's not as intense. In 2K19, there were fog mods where you could affect the intensity. I don't think they have that in 20, but for me, I think it's just right. If you take it away, you will notice a massive difference in the way that the players look because, just like in Blacktop, lighting affects the models. Because of the way the fog is affecting it, I would actually say this is the difference between it looking bland like it does in the base game, and more like what we expect expected from next gen here. Oh, and I very nearly forgot the scoreboards because that happens to be a mod I just recently installed. It wasn't there when I first started the My League, however, they finally come out with different ESPN options. And there are more, they have retro scoreboards which I never use because it just doesn't fit the theme, but they have one for every day of the week, the NBA Finals, the Special Edition, and even Remembering Kobe, which is highly useful for me because we're doing the Kobe Challenge. So I'm pretty sure because of like licensing, I don't think that 2K is ever going to be able to have scoreboards like this. I know NBA Live does. but yeah, that's just another reason we need mods. Once you've decided what you want your game to look like, there are hundreds of different cyber faces for you to choose from. There are plenty of different sites for you to use, but I recommend 2K Specialist. It's just organized the best there. This is how you actually bring your game to life and fill in a lot of the holes that the base 2K game comes with. Or you can just flat out collect a lot of their mistakes because <laughs> there are a lot of them. So if you're filling in holes, you'll be able to get guys like Reggie Miller that might not ever be in 2K, Rasheed Wallace so you can actually use the 04 Pistons, Charles Barkley so you can get a better retro Rockets team, Team, this is where you end up getting an experience that will actually coerce you to play offline because your my career will become more full my league it'll actually be worth playing cyber faces are one of the main reasons i've actually been able to assemble a believable 2010 lakers team despite them never having been in 2k since 2k10 throughout the season that i've been streaming on twitch we've been updating kobe bryant's cyber face and recently for this video i found the most accurate one i think i'm going to find so this is kobe bryant in the base game and this is kobe bryant done by modders don't ask me why modders are doing a better job on some of the biggest name players in the game than the actual devs are. I could understand some of the role players maybe, but a name like Kobe should be a replica. Also thanks to Cyberfaces, I was able to really make the 2010 Lakers believable because the only Pau Gasol you get in the game is the older version, and it doesn't matter which team you're using, he was older on the Grizzlies, the Lakers, so you're actually able to get a 2008-2009 Pau, or just something that looks around that time so it doesn't look like he's on the brink of retirement. It really helps the immersion. You know what also helps the immersion? Not having an action figure representing young LeBron James. 
games. They totally ruined his cyber face in 2K17, never touched it. However, thanks to modders, you have one for when he was playing on the Cavs, you have one for when he's playing on the Heat, and on the Lakers. I really think that just makes sense given that he is a lot of places in the base game, so having one or two models where one looks nothing like him doesn't really help. And so if you have the 07 Cavs, or in my case, the 10 Cavs, it feels more realistic. Speaking of a team like the 10 Cavs that's not even in the game, that's what all of this culminates to. Once you've got graphic mods, cyber faces, and then you go looking for some roster mods, you've officially opened up an entire different world for offline play. Now you can get teams that might not ever be in the game, like the Sonics. Modders take great care to make sure the arena looks as accurate as possible, and 2K does have some tools for them to do that. However, some of them go even deeper. And so I'm running Thundershack's ultimate roster, which pretty much has every retro team I think anybody is ever going to want, and they're fully filled as well. I also forgot to mention at the beginning when I was talking about the arena that I also have the crowd modded, and so how you have the basic crowd in the game where the gear isn't very detailed, the modded crowds are actually wearing jerseys specific to the players. And so once you've done everything you want to the way the game looks, the different teams, the different faces, you can use it for any offline mode. My league, my GM, there's even a way to get whatever roster you're using into my career. Yes, these mods even go as far as to fixing blacktop, the blacktop that 2K has totally neglected since 2K17. Turns out, modders found a way to use environments that you really only see in cutscenes pretty much in my career, and have opened them up for you to be able to use them on blacktop, and also for you to be able to use whatever roster you want on them so that players are wearing their jerseys, not just these bland and confusing shirts. So you'll be able to play at the Under Armour Court, which in my opinion looks the best, again, due to the lighting. There's the Night Court at Venice Beach. The old 2K14 Court, which last time I checked doesn't work that well because the shadows are not enabled, but it's there for memories. And then they even let you play in some of the penthouses. That's particularly cool because there's a lot of different gear that was designed for whatever teams you put the guys on, and so then they're just kind of wearing casual clothing, and I get that nobody probably uses blacktop, but it would be so easy for 2K to do something like this, just in case. Whenever I visit my cousin, blacktop is our go-to mode, and it'd be cool to have these different options. It would make the game feel more complete. So this is not where the buck stops. You start to get modders that take on more ambitious projects like the College Hoops mod. This mod transforms NBA 2K to College 2K. Accurate college logos, jerseys, courts, coaches, and then if you go find somebody's college roster because the mod itself does not come with complete rosters, you'll be able to download them and have them attached to the teams, and now you can run a my league in a college season. So far, I've started a project where I'm trying to make all-time college teams, and check this out. Kobe said if he had went to college, it would have been Duke. However, when I placed Froby on the Duke team, it just did not feel right. It didn't feel immersive. So I was able to go find a high school slash rookie Kobe Bryant Cyberface, put him on Duke. And this is what Cyberfaces have the ability to get you. You can go as far to have college teams with college-looking NBA legends. But I think the even better feature here is using college teams from my career. So if you follow one of the links in the comment section or description that teaches you how to use a custom cyberface for my career and then also use a custom roster you can have something like this where i have michael jordan playing on unc of course during recording for this video i kind of forgot to use the young mj but you get the point point. and yes for those of you who are wondering if you attach a cyberface to a my career player he will go through the cutscenes. you must have been training with the russian olympians again Ty, your turnover ratio last year was one and one what about now three to one young cp steady feeding the greedy <laughs> no doubt gonna make one heck of a stay for a major one day. So as you can see, the options with mods really get limitless. Hell, there are a lot of fields I haven't touched because I don't really do much with them on Twitch. I really just run my leagues. But if you check out a channel like Dominus, he's got all types of anime characters, Pokemon, anything you can really name, and that's a whole field I haven't even learned how to touch yet. But if you plan on using mods, you're probably going to be using it on an offline mode. You can technically take a modded cyberface onto the park, but I'm going to guess that that eventually ends up becoming a ban. So if you're sticking with my career, my league, my GM, you are absolutely going to want to check out slider sets, specifically from people like Shady Mike, Pop Boy, and they provide slider sets that actually makes the game challenging because one of the biggest crimes that 2K committed this year was shipping a game with a Hall of Fame computer that plays like it's on Rookie. I had to learn this the hard way as I was streaming the My League with the 2010 Lakers, and as I was having to let teams like the 96 Bulls basically catch up just to make the game competitive, I went searching for an answer. So the mods are going to 
make your game look and feel way more immersive, but they are not going to fix this patty cake as artificial intelligence. In specific, 2K with the Pop Boy, which is the name of his channel, he provides a slider set called the Beyond Hall of Fame sliders. Now, if you are going to venture into that world, I recommend that you kind of amend the sliders for what works best for you. There are some things that I didn't love, like the rebounding, the steal, so you just kind of have to keep tweaking it and tweaking it to get the perfect challenge. However, it is still a million times better than what the game ships with. The teams actually fight back, every game becomes competitive. So that's where we're at now on Twitch, where I've got all the mods installed, I've got all the rosters, and the My League is as fun as it used to be before online was a big thing because every game feels like a grind. Every game feels extremely competitive. But no matter what you decide to do, whether it be the slider sets or the mods, they will 100% make NBA 2K20 actually worth playing. It feels like the experience that we thought we would have when we first got our PlayStation 4s and Xbox Ones and turned on NBA 2K14. When we were looking into the future after that game into like 2020, this is something like we imagined I think. I know we didn't imagine going backwards yet, here we are. So the links to everything I discussed are in the comment section and description. There are detailed tutorials for everything on how to mod the graphics, how to use custom rosters, even in the playoffs by the way because if for some reason you want to do like a playoff tournament, yeah 2k does not even let you in the base game use custom rosters. Not gonna try to figure that one out but there are ways you can do that and there are ways to actually have fun while basketball, the real basketball is away. So make sure to check out some of the YouTubers I mentioned here, Pop Boy, Shady Mike, Dominus. Links to their channels will be in the description as well. Also be sure to hit the like button, comment, and sub if you enjoyed and hit the bell next to my name if you want notifications every time a new video drops. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all on the next one.